A very good evening to one and all present here. This is Joel Peter Vergis, and I am the co-founder of Argument a Podcast, and I'm also joined by my co-founders Maria and Minat, and also the content members of Argument a Podcast, Nidli, Atul, and Rishvi. The webinar titled "Legality of Anti-Conversion Laws" is led by Advocate Rahul Tiwari. So, before I introduce the speaker for today, I would like to thank each of you all for joining in for the webinar, and especially I'd like to thank all the students and the practicing professionals as well as part of the of, of the form procedure, and especially students from several universities like School of Law, Kaisi Dean Tibi University, uh, Banast Banastarli Vidyapeet, Faculty of Law, Aligarh University, GGSIPU, Utkal University. National University of Study and Research and and lots more. I may have missed some, but I uh, would like to thank thank each of you for making it here, and also special thanks to the Dean, HOD, and coordinators of, of SSU Christ Dean Tibi Dean Tibi University. And once again, I'd like to thank each of you for joining here. So this webinar is brought to you by Argument a Podcast, and it's a platform to discuss, deliberate, and debate on several social, legal, and political issues. Mm-hmm. We are also available on several platforms like YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and other platforms as well. So do check it out as well. So now, let me introduce the speaker for you. Advocate Rahul Tiwari is the founding and managing partner of LNS Associate, which is an MCA registered law firm. This law firm also provides online legal education and training to law students. and it also offers legal education to, to fresh graduates as well he is also the panel member of world cyber security forum that is w wcsf he has also presented 25 research papers in various international and national seminars in denmark nlsiu bangalore bhu cnlu but cnlu patna iit hyderabad nlu odisha triple it allahabad delhi university and has seven unpaid publications in prestigious journals including the ugc approved one He has also been invited to be the guest speaker on forty-three webinars where he has taught law students about basics of constitutional and criminal laws, including the ones from Law Seco to discuss various legal issues. He has also been invited in NLU Delhi as a resource person in a national conference on protection of women from sexual harassment at workplace. I would like to welcome Advocate Rahul Tiwari once again as he will be taking over the session. Also requesting the participants to kindly uh, mute your mics and switch off the videos. And if any concerns or queries you would have with regard to the webinar, uh, with regard to the, the topic at hand, we would uh, like to have uh, put put it in the chat box. Uh, our moderators of the session would would would, would, would be taking it forward and uh, addressing it to sir as well. And also would request you to stay back and uh, and and fill up the feedback form, which will also be put up in, in the chat box as well with regard to the session in order in order to receive certificates as well. So thank you, sir, once again for coming over and uh, hoping to have a great session today, sir. So it's me, Advocate Rahul Tiwari, and uh, you can definitely connect me on LinkedIn. And uh, obviously, you know that apart from being a criminal lawyer, I'm I'm also faculty at Study IQ, and uh, this is my forty seventh webinar actually, where you know I enlighten students and uh, about the legal issues and my personal interpretation of the law. And uh, also that uh, I have uh, I I have launched uh, paid courses also where I teach the practical aspects of the law. So before moving forward, yes, Joel, this is the webinar. But uh, these first two pages are very basic in nature. You can read it. But before moving forward, I would like to have like few uh, like for next four five minutes. Let's make this uh, webinar a bit interactive. So like. Uh, I'll just take uh, two two answers from each side. Those anti-conversion laws, okay, which is there in India, do you support anti-conversion laws or not? If yes, why? Why do you support these anti-conversion laws, and why you don't support these anti-conversion laws? Give uh, two two answers, and feel feel uh, feel free to answer. Even if you make a mistake, it is fine. Because you guys are here to learn, okay? You guys are students, and <clears throat> and students are bound to make mistakes, and you learn from your mistakes, so it's okay. Just raise hand and give me your answer. Then just give your observation, like what is anti-conversion law is all about, and uh, do the anti-conversion laws have a place in secular country like India? Yes, then why? No, then why not? Please give me the answer. Please let's make this session interactive, because see. It's not that I want to uh, behave like the other you know, panel member, panel speakers. That uh, you know, I'll come to this webinar. I'll showcase my knowledge. I'll promote about my course, and then Joel will give me a Thanksgiving speech, and then we'll wrap it. No, 
that's not the purpose the purpose is to make you and uh, understand because the, a lawyer is one who uh, thinks critically and as well as analytically so your analytical skill has to so please give me the answer okay and that's where i'll move forward see and you can see this is a very small document unlike uh, because in the morning i had a three hour session with the geeta institute of law panipat where i was teaching them uh, about uh, uh the various aspects of mob lynching fake news and media trial and this one is a very small web, uh, in fact document so i'll wrap this things very quickly and i actually want to make this webinar more interactive in nature so please give me a guys answer like uh, do you if you support then why and uh, do you think this laws are right or wrong please give me your observation please and i'll only request that you please give the answers yes i'm st i've started noting down the answer and then i'll move forward anyone please give it a try make this things interactive because the thing is religion today has become a, a such a sensitive issue that even if you go speak something on religion you are killed okay so that is why it is very important for us to interact to talk with each other to communicate our observation That is the basic reason. Oh, uh, sir, may I? Yeah, yeah sure, ma'am. Why not? Uh, sir, so, I'm sorry, I couldn't see the raise hand option. So no, 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 I saw that. Did not see. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Tell me. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, I have just gone through the legislations of different states, which is Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and. Uh, Speak up, please. Speak up, please. Oh, am I audible? Yes, sir. <laughs> So, yes so so uh, one thing what i found a uh, common in all the legislation is that uh, they have not really uh, defined what they mean when they say a uh, uh, conversion through marriage so uh, it says forced conversion but they don't really define how they going to uh, what is the elements uh, to be considered when you say it is a forced uh, marriage so we have a lot of judgments which say that uh, Oh, uh, conversion. There are few judgments which talks about forced conversion. So, yeah, that's uh, a good point. But uh, the thing is, that is where when you know being a law, are you a law student? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, which year? Second year, sir. Second year, perfect. Then see, uh, ma'am, always remember one thing: being a law student now, whenever you make a statement, like I have just more than fifteen MOOC full completions, okay, and I have seen that people while making their argument. In front uh, during the moot court, they say they say they use these words, sir. I think maybe uh, because no, when whatever you speak, speak with full authority. Even if it, uh, even if you are wrong, it is fine. Okay, you uh, see, suppose you make a false state, wrong statement, which you thought it was right, but when you realize that no, uh, my statement was wrong. then you correct your mistake right so always be authoritative and now say so when you have used the word man forced conversion what do you mean by the word what is the basic meaning of this word force yes. i never was expecting answer force means you know uh, uh, someone is forcing at a gun point no at all convert to this religion but you gave a very perfect answer force in emotional it can be by the way of instigation means i'm instigating you no no adopt this religion you know you, uh, you will get this reward from the god the that reward from the god this is the actual meaning of force so what is your basic view point tell me uh sir i uh, i'm 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 sorry okay, okay, let's make it clear hmm. do you support anti conversion law or no no sir you don't support no sir Okay. Why don't you? Uh, why? Uh, what's your reason behind this? I'll write your own reasons. I'll discuss all these things in the webinar. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, first, I think uh, when we talk about anti-conversion, I think it's there in our constitution itself that, and uh, a very. Uh, I read this uh, judgment of. Um, Uh, Reverend, uh, I'm not getting the uh, uh, name of the case. Stanis Law. Yes, yes, yes. Thank Which you. Which one? Reverend Stanislaus. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So in that judgment, it was uh, very clear that when we say uh, we have the right to profess our religion, it does not mean we have the right to convince someone else to convert. So uh, I think in uh, in the first. Uh, ma'am, ma'am. 
in tehsil una wala judgment versus union of india and see guys this is how we interact and learn because we never study law we read law okay and i'll teach you how to read the periods also in this webinar just be patient till the end so ma'am uh, but in tehsil una wala versus union of india the supreme court said that mob lynching is a crime but why the state is not recognizing them so right. then alok shrivastava versus union of india to 2020 supreme court said the fake news is an issue and the my, mass migration of the migrant laborers from delhi gujarat punjab from south india towards east up and bihar and odisha okay and obviously odisha uh, and jharkhand it was because of fake news still we don't have any laws on fake news in the judgment of bellu swami okay it was held that if two people without getting married two unmarried two unmarried people two unmarried heterosexual people living together in a same household in the shared household over a period of time the woman also has the protection of uh, protection of women from domestic violence act section 2 and that is why living the, the supreme court legitimized the living relationship way back 12 years old uh, ago but still we don't have any laws for like uh, we still we don't have any laws for living relationship uh sir i um i mean uh, just because we have some legislation it is not mandatory that i mean it is not, it's not like it, it yeah it is mandatory that it has to be followed in the society but it does not happen that way irrespective of how many ever laws we have so one classic example of this is anti conversion law because i have seen the parallel how between... many anti conversion laws are there in india uh, really you won't answer I'm not sure. So I can name the states which I know uh, which have anti-conversion law. Yeah, sure. But I don't tell have. Me, tell me, tell me. Okay, so uh, Karnataka has anti-conversion law. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Assam. Yeah. Um, Assam. Uh, Assam was the first state to impose it, uh, and um, even Gujarat. Gujarat. Gujarat has an anti-conversion law. And how about uh, mp yes so uh, madhya pradesh also has anti conversion odisha odisha yes odisha also has so i so these two uh, states are the major one uh, so yes sir the state uh, c the dharm uh, something act was which was passed by mp state of mp it was held to be legitimate uh, by supreme court in 1977 then why are you objecting anti uh, conversion law uh sir for me it is the intention behind that law uh yes on paper on paper the law looks very yeah. good the thing is people always tend to confuse few concepts and that is why i chose this topic to clarify a lot of things and hereby in this webinar i will both support anti conversion laws and i will also oppose anti conversion laws i will tell you how anti conversion laws are right but the present up state government ordinance is unconstitutional because the anti conversion laws see at one time you said that in the stanilus versus state of mp 1977 the supreme court clearly said that these laws are valid you have right to propagate but you don't have the right to convert so that's where the supreme court clearly supreme court clearly identified anti conversion laws as legal but the question is way back in 1977 okay but the question is that why the issue has arisen again after like close to uh, 44 years and what is the reason that why up and uh, anti conversion ordinance is controversial in nature that's what we are going to discuss and before discussing that we will definitely discuss what is secularism is all about so secularism it simply means that the state does not identify any particular religion state treating all the religion equally and state not interfering in the uh, not interfering uh, in the state of affairs of the religion this is the 
holistic example of secularism. But again, secularism is of two types. Western secularism, one of the earliest example of Western secularism started in 16th century when Henry VII wanted to divorce his wife, uh, uh, Catherine of Aragon, and Pope Clement VII refused to grant him divorce. It is, uh, let's not go into the detail why. And that's where uh, Henry VIII got furious. He removed Pope Clement and said that the state is now uh, taking over the church. And after that, uh, even uh, the Thomas Roosevelt or the one of the earliest, um, uh, just got slipped out of my mind, one of the earliest president of USA also formed the guideline because of this case and they adopted the strategy of division of church and the state. Means the state will not interfere in the working of church and the church shall not interfere in the working of the state. This was, this is the concept of Western secularism. Indian secularism clearly and if you see the Indian culture, Indian secularism clearly says one thing, Sarva Dharma Sambhav means all dharms are, uh, all religion are equal. Sarva Dharma Sambhav and uh, the second part is uh, the uh, uh, Vasudev Katambutam means the entire world is one family and all the people living together are, uh, are family members to each other. But now, where the problem has arisen? Please go to the next page, Joel. Yeah, just wait. So, why the controversy has started? First, the growing religious hatred in our country. Second, the propaganda of love jihad by political parties. Now, the problem is, what was the problem and do we have a loss for it and how it got clubbed to a political ideology? It is uh, a fact that human trafficking is a, an offense. Many people from uh, Eastern, uh, from the, uh, they traffic, uh, you know, uh, they lure uh, many young women from Nepal, from uh, to India, from Bihar, Chhattan, uh, even from Andhra Pradesh to the metro cities in the lure of jobs. So it is the lure. And one of the lurement was also a fact by, it, it was done by a minority section of the criminal was also a way of marriage. Yeah, they used to marry that we are going to sell, go in, uh, settle in this country and they used to sell. So what was this? Was this a love job? No. This was a classic example of human trafficking. And human trafficking mm -hmm. is again defined in Indian Penal Code. Okay? And again, Indian Penal Code also says that if the offense is committed by an Indian all over the place, it is the the on the Indian laws will be applicable on that person. Means the ITC, the person will be governed by the ITC. But how it got to convert? But this, what was this offense? An example of human trafficking. But because this offense happened, it gave the uh, opportunity to one of the political party to name it as Love Chhat and to propagate their own uh, political ideology. This is the problem. Now, misinformed term of secularism. Often, unfortunately, in our country, now is the situation that secularism is being, uh, you know, propagated as a, uh, secularism is now being propagated as, uh, what should I say, that uh, secularism is now propagated as an ideology where it says that uh, secularism means uh, the appeasement of Christians and Muslims in India, which is absolutely false. Secularism simply means that the state shall not have an official religion of its own. State shall treat all the religion equally. State shall not discriminate with any religion. State, when the dispute arises between two religious groups, the state will remain, not will, I would use the word, shall remain neutral. That is the actual meaning of secularism. But how it is now being, unfortunately, being propagated is that the secularism means the appeasement of minorities, especially appeasement of Muslim and appeasement of Christian, which is absolutely false. And that is why uh, state gets, uh, you know, state get a uh, quick success in bringing in controversial ordinances and uh, you know passing such comments and. Uh, uh, Passing such comments, and what is the end result that they get a quick benefit? Uh, 
candidates uh, to their, uh, you know, in the upcoming elections or any other uh, or any other their political achievements. Okay, that is the uh, issues. Now, UP ordinance. When we see on paper, it looks like uh, okay, it's fine. But the controversy has arisen that uh, anti-conversion laws. Okay, now the state of UP had mixed anti-conversion and the inter-marriage faith uh, along with each other. And that is where the controversy has started. Why? Because marriage between two individuals is a very private affair. Okay, but when you are mixing it with, with politics and with anti-conversion law, the problem starts. Now here, as I have uh, promised to one of the students that I will defend anti-conversion laws also and I will oppose the present DUP uh, ordinance also. And how? Let's uh, see the example. Now, what is the basic problem? Now we have to identify that what is basically the problem is. Basic problem is that yes, we have to again at the same point of time, if we have to accept that illegal mass conversion to take place in India by various religious organizations, not just targeting the Christian missionaries or any other. Why? Because we, uh, if we just target the Christian mission missionaries, that uh, you know they are luring other people, they are you know uh, forcing. Uh, just like uh, the uh, Dinashri ma'am uh, gave the example that uh, they are actually luring the people to you know adopt Christianity. We do have a concept of karvaps, isn't it? We do have a concept of kafirs. So, it is something that we cannot target just one religious organization. It is where we have to blame all the religious institution. And why the religious institution has been played? I was reading, uh, you know, few quotes of Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, to whom I admire a lot. He said that the religion is a very private affair. And the moment religion comes out of the house, the problem starts. Okay. Now the thing is, we have to accept that the illegal conversions are being taken places. And who are the prime targets? The poor people. They are the prime targets. They lure them. Okay, you know, uh, come to this religion, all your problems will be vanished. You know, adopt this religion, your problems will be vanished. The people from, uh, you know, the, the backward community, they become the uh, biggest, uh, one of the biggest targets of these organizations to convert. Why? They'll say that, that no, you're following this religion. See, uh, they are treating you uh, uh, very badly since ages. You are being discriminated. At, uh, come to this religion. We are all are equal. Again, false. And also the tribal communities. Why? Because tribal communities don't identify themselves in, with a particular religion and they follow the idea of anim uh, animism. I mean, you know, they just uh, uh, they uh, pray to uh, some animal figure or some fire god. So they have their uh, uh, absolutely separate re religious, uh, you know, uh, their uh, religious practice. And these communities become the biggest targets of this religious organization for the illegal conversion. Why am I saying illegal conversion? Conversion means what? Like suppose I'm reading about Islam. I'm reading about uh, Christianity and I feel I'm reading about uh, Sikhism and I feel that this particular religion actually, uh, you know, uh, they, it actually attracts me a lot. These practices, the teaching of uh, this uh, particular messenger or a prophet attracts me a lot. And if by my own choice, mm -hmm. if I get converted to a religion, nobody can stop me. And that is what the Supreme Court of India said in the judgment of Yosef Sain. Famously known as the Hathiya judgment was of state of Kerala. But if someone is regularly instigating me, regularly, you know, uh, trying to, uh, what I would say that uh, uh, regularly influencing me that, you know, uh, don't follow this religion and get converted to this religion, this is the one true God. Okay. And uh, sub, uh, giving me, uh, regularly influencing me and, uh, you know, uh, giving, uh, compelling me with, uh, whether by any goods, kind, money, or by any other emotional way, that is where it is illegal. Why? Because that is where you are misusing a, a right, and that is why you are see, the, uh, the consent, the word consent is being obtained by fraud. If you want to read more about consent, 
please read section 88, 89, 90 of Indian Penal Code. That is where you will realize that how the word consent is being interpreted in the criminal jurisprudence. Consent clearly means that the, when the person gives the consent, he knows all the consequences of the act. He knows uh, for what purpose the consent is being taken and the person is in the position to withdraw his consent at any point of time. So if these three full conditions are fulfilled, only then the consent is, uh, taken, uh, is uh, uh, said to have given voluntarily. Otherwise, all these consent are said to either have been taken at by manipulation, by coercion or by fear. And all these things in the section 3 of UP Ordinance Act is there. But till section 3 is alright. But the problem starts with section 4 and section 12 of UP Ordinance Bill. And that is where we are going to discuss. But before going to discuss uh, the UP Ordinance Bill, uh, I don't want to discuss uh, the UP just discuss the anti conversion law. Okay. And uh, just to present myself as a spokesperson of... Uh, uh, just present myself as a different kind of spokesperson of all the political parties. So before, because you have joined this webinar and I also launched a course which uh, where I'm going to teach you everything about the drafting part of CRPC, all the important provisions of CPC, uh, drafting the moot court memorials and uh, drafting moot court memorials and uh, how do we write the research papers also. And uh, I will share the course detail with you uh, very soon. Okay, and uh, it's a six week course. Uh, and uh, if you calculate, the, please, I would humbly request, please calculate the price also. It is that you won't find the, a cheaper uh, course with a cheaper price than mine, than, uh, than the mine course. And please follow me on LinkedIn. Please see the reviews of I've taught more than 1000 students via paid courses. Please go and uh, see the reviews of my students. You'll get an idea. But before moving forward to the anti-conversion part, let's uh, take out 10 minutes and let's see how do we read, how do we read the Bayer Act. And the biggest uh, disadvantage, big, biggest problem with the student is that even I was told by my seniors that read a lot of books, you know, we have to read a lot of books to become good lawyers. Balls. This is the biggest lie told to a law student. Read Bayer Acts. First, read the bear, develop a habit of reading the bear, and then switch to book. Like, suppose, suppose uh, if you are to read Constitution of India and you straight away open MP Jan, Jan Pandey or Didi Basu, that's where you are not reading the Constitutional Law of India. That's where you are reading the interpretation of Didi Basu, interpretation of MP Jan, interpretation of Jan Pandey of Constitution. You are not reading the actual Constitution. So, let's see how do we read the bear. Can please, uh, uh, just zoom in uh, so that I can read it up. See, Article 25, Constitution of India. Yeah, yeah, just wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is, that's it, that's it. So, this is the direct language and I will explain you how each and every words are interpreted. Freedom of conscience. First thing, because when we ask anyone that, oh, what do you mean by Article 25? Article 25, 90% of the students will say Article 25 means uh, right to religion. Simple, right to religion or freedom of religion. That's it. Over. Or uh, Article 25 means secularism. So now let's read and understand what is Article 25. Freedom. Freedom means you have a right to freedom of conscience. The first word comes in the, is the conscience. Means you have the freedom of conscience. Means to adopt any faith. Like suppose in Hinduism, you have the right to adopt any school of uh, philosophy. Whether it can be, whether you can follow Hinduism uh, through Brahmo Samaj, through Arya Samaj, or whether through Vaishnavism or Shaivism, nobody can stop you. You want to for, be a Vaishnav Hindu? You can follow Vaishnavism. You, uh, Vaishnavism means uh, studying uh, where you pray Lord Vishnu. And Shaivism means where you uh, pray Lord Shiva. Okay. Or Brahmu Samaj or Arya Samaj or even Iskon. It is your right. Uh, you know, means, um, and in Hindi, it's called uh, Panth Parasti. Means, Konse Panth ko follow karte. Especially in the same way, Islam. And just see this one word, how deep is the meaning. And that is the reason why we must uh, lay focus on the period reading first. Okay, and uh, just in the meantime, uh, 
just before moving forward, just uh, because we are starting a new uh, concept now, so it will uh, just uh, uh, bring a change of mode for you. Yeah. So in the chat box, uh, I have shared the course details also. Please, uh, the link has been shared. I will humbly request. Please at least go through this syllabus one. 12 live classes, 6 recording sessions, 18 classes for 1 month and 15 days. Even if you have any exams or any internships, all the classes are on Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 4 p.m. onwards. There are no chances that my classes will collide with your internships, with your exams or with your classes. But in case you miss out to any classes, still I am going to give you recordings for 15 days. So, okay. So now moving forward to now let's come back to again to the bearer treaty. What does it say? Freedom of consign. Like and now suppose if you're a Muslim, it's your right whether you want to follow, whether you want to be a Sunni or whether you want to be a Shia. And even in the Sunni, if you if you're a Sunni Muslim, we have five schools of Sunni Muslims. And in India, the famously the school of uh, uh, thoughts which is followed amongst the majority of the Muslims in India is the Hanafi school of law. Okay. Uh, similarly, with the Christians, whether you want to be a Protestant, whether you want to be a Catholic, you have the freedom. And that is what Constitution of India, the Article uh, 25, the first three words tells you. Freedom of conscience. And then, there is a comma, and it says, free profession means you can freely declare your faith and your belongingness that yes i belong to this particular religion i will follow this uh, religion i am you can identify yourself as the, the uh, to uh, this uh, religious one then it is then the word is practice it means that you have the right to practice any ritual custom related to that religion Nobody can stop you. But again, the word practice is being uh, interpreted in a huge uh, But uh, that will come later. And then propagation of religion. Propagation of religion means you have the right to spread awareness about your religion. And nobody can stop you. If you want to promote the teaching of Jesus Christ, you can spread the, you can spread the teaching of Jesus Christ, you can spread the teaching of Bible, you can spread the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, you can spread the teaching of Guru Nanak Dev, you can spread the teaching of Bhagavad Gita, nobody can stop you. But you cannot manipulate, remember this word, manipulate someone to convert into a particular religion. It is mysterious. It is the choice of the other person. You cannot see. You can just spread the knowledge about your religion. The persons adopting your religion or not adopting, it's that person's choice. And that is what it was held in the judgment of Stanley's versus State of MP 1977 Supreme Court. It means propagation does not mean conversion. Right to convert some other person is not a fundamental right but yes it is your fundamental right to that you can follow any other religion and the famous unfortunate examples are missionary videos which comes up in the uh, social media so many times which is taking place in punjab at, uh, uh, at, at a, such a you know, rapid pace Kharbapsi, again one of the biggest uh, i would say the attack on the secular fabric of the country Karwapsi, you know, because they are saying that no, all the basic religion is Hinduism, which, uh, you know, I would have to disagree. And uh, the way, uh, you know, the suppression of minority rights are being taken place because of this term is again something troublesome. Uh, Joy, please move forward. Oh, please go to the next page. Just wait. Sponsored conversion. Sponsored conversion. There was a very famous, uh, uh, you know, person who was spreading uh, his uh, religious teaching through uh, uh, through uh, social media. Uh, all these sponsored conversions, and they are basically banned and they are illegal. Why? Because this is where I am defending that anti-conversion. That anti-conversion laws are, are valid, but. What is the problem with the UP ordinance and why I am opposing UP ordinance? This will come now. But Article 25 sub clause 1, what does it say? Subject to means provided that 
subject to public order means you have freedom of uh, conscience freedom of profession freedom of practice and freedom of propagation of any religion but what is it subject to it is subject to public order by public order means going to a religious place is not your fundamental right going to temple going to masjid going to church is not a fundamental is you can it is your right you should follow it but it is subject to public order ismail faruqi judgment always remember uh, the supreme court said that yes uh, the religious places are not the integral part of the religion right fully right because suppose uh, subject to public order like you know when this pandemic uh, was uh, taking place all the religious uh, uh, sites uh, all the religious places were closed and a few of the religious places were allowed by state and later on by the supreme court which was again i would say it was Well, I would say that that judgment uh, invited a right uh, constructive criticism. It was not right to allow mass gathering in the name of religion, and uh, the courts should have been more strict while giving those uh, two to three controversial decisions. Okay, and that too during the pandemic lockdown. Now, subject to public order, subject to morality, subject to health, and any other prov provisions. all the persons are entitled to freedom of conscience means you can follow any religion and right to freely profess practice and propagate the religion means subject to all these things means that this fundamental right also is subject to it is subject to what it is subject to uh, reasonable restrictions and uh, just uh, ismail faruq is yes, okay and nothing in this article nothing means it says whenever you find this word nothing it clearly said that that particular section is not absolute to uh, nothing in this article shall affect the operation of any existing law or prevent the state for making any law means unlike the western secularism india secularism says that the state can interfere where it can interfere that is the question state can interfere where in the optional religious practice in uh, this uh, but and not in the mandatory religious practice like suppose if you want to pray you are praying at your home praying to god is your fundamental right and it is an absolute uh, it is the mandatory uh, i would say mandatory religious practice not the optional one and state cannot force you or cannot stop you from praying to your god that is uh, see basic uh, religious right is what like you want to pray to any god you want to offer namaz or you want to do puja or you want to uh, you know read bible nobody can stop you the state cannot stop you but state can definitely interfere in the optional religious practice such as the way state interfered in triple tamak the state uh, like polygamy like janmashtami uh, you know uh, organizing that uh, festival of janmashtami the anti festival or the jali kattu okay and uh, where was the judgment uh, uh, was given on the famous judgment like jalikattu shabrimala judgment optional religious practice and hanif qureshi judgment like uh, slaughter of cow as on uh, on bakri uh, as a sacrifice state said that uh, it is your right to offer sacrifice on bakri but it is your option means uh, you can offer the sacri uh, sacrifice of uh you know of a goat also or a sheep also it is not mandatory that you will offer the cow slaughter on only so that's where the state can interfere means if you want if you are uh, if you are offering a uh, goat or uh, a goat or sheep as a sacrifice you want to offer anything as a sacrifice you sacrifice if you are want to offer cow also you offer it but that's where the state can interfere if it is going against morality or public order if someone other person is objecting to it okay now uh, it's now we are on the 6 now we are coming to the end but please go to this uh, second part yeah now i have defended that uh, how uh, you know how uh, the anti conversion laws are constitutional but now i am going to oppose it that where the problem is where this is creating a problem now the problem is for see if you read a uh, tahseen puna wala judgment the supreme court said that the law should serve three purpose preventive measures 
punitive measures mean the punishment part and the remedy, remedial measures mean the providing the remedy part. So I strongly feel that anti-conversion laws like the conver the state the laws which are made by the MP state of MP or the state of Odisha, all these laws are preventive in nature. They they actually lack uh, what should I say that uh, they actually lack uh, the uh, they actually have a very less of the punitive measures. Okay, but the problem is that uh, in the state of UP, their ordinance they have clubbed the anti-conversion as well as the interfaith marriage. Now the question arises that do we have the laws for interfaith marriage or not? Was it required to, you know, uh, was it required to make uh, a, a special laws for interfaith marriage? I don't think so. Why? Because we already have a national laws on it. And what, which is the law? Special marriage act. What is the special marriage act? It says that people from other community, if there are two people, two consenting adults, both the people, suppose there is a Hindu and a Muslim who wants to marry each other, they can marry each other through special marriage act. And what are the conditions? First of all, first condition is that they should not be, please read, uh, because we are running out of time and I have to take your questions also. I would definitely request you that please read section 2 first of, uh, in, uh, of uh, you know, special marriage act. Okay, of 1954, it says that what is a degree of prohibited relationship? Like if two people are into a degree of prohibited relationship, then they cannot use a special marriage act as a tool and marry each other. Okay, so you can see how strong the law is. Uh, uh, all these are given. Uh, uh, and now, first of the group, section four. Highlight, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay, okay. Now, section four. What does it say? What that? What are the conditions which are related to solemnization of special marriage? Act? Now, whenever you read this word, notwithstanding in any period, always write with a pencil that it means in spite of anything contained. So, in spite of anything contained, in uh, in spite of anything, any uh, of the law. From the time of being forced related to solemnization of marriage, a marriage between any two persons may be solemnized under this act if at the time of marriage neither party, uh, if neither party have a living spouse, means if there is any law which prohibits, but there are two parties and two parties, and if they don't have any uh, living spouse with them whom they have not given the divorce or both the parties are capable of giving the valid consent. Remember that why I stressed focus on this word consent. They cannot give a consent to each other. Uh, means uh, they can give, sorry, uh, they, are, they are capable of giving valid consent to each other. They don't have a living spouse. They are allowed to marry with each other. Please go to the next page now. Yeah. Explanation part, uh, unless and until the, uh, the customs allow, yeah. you can read section 2 and section 4. Uh, all these things uh, gives a very holistic picture. And that is why I strongly feel that uh, uh, bringing another law which deals with the same topic, it's nothing but uh, creating controversy. Please go to the next page. Why? Because of section 5, yeah. And in section 2, it gives all the definition of special marriage act. Section 5 gives you all the essential condition that you have to give it to the guest aid. you have to declare to the guest aid that what are, what, why you are married to each other that you are fulfilling to each and every conditions you are uh, if you are going to change your religion there is an official guest aid you have to mention over there also and section 5 says that the notice of intended marriage means if you are going to marry each other you have to first give a notice, you have to first give an advertisement in the newspaper that we are going to marry each other if someone has any objection, kindly tell us. Means it is done to, you know, rule out the possibility of bigamy. Okay, that if someone, uh, you know, to rule out the possibility of bigamy, why? Because like suppose if someone has a living spouse and uh, like suppose there are two persons who are in Delhi and uh, the man had a living spouse in uh, Bangalore and uh, they want to get married to each other so it is essential that they have to first 
declare a notice and they have to first advertise about their marriage so that if there is a living spouse to whom she has not given the divorce she should be known and she can take action against uh, such kind uh, such, such kind of illegal marriages so just to rule out the possibilities of bigamy these things are there so all those things which are there in up ordinance such as giving the notice 60 days in advance because in here it is said that 30 days in advance the official if you are going to change your religion it also provides that you have to declare in the official guest that uh, i am adopting this particular religion the essential criteria and uh, all the definitions are more or less same so what was the reason of when you have already have a law when you already have a law there was no reason for combining interfaith marriage along with illegal conversion and that is where the controversy has started now very quickly what was the controversy uh, and now i'm going to highlight few things from uh, a research paper which was published in ili law review winter 2020 edition i will also request you to everyone that please go and read that research paper please go to the next page now we have only three pages left and i'll quickly yes it, in this uh, state uh, in the uh, section 3 also says that uh, you know that for the purpose of marriage nobody can compel you know nobody can compel any other person by the view of force or coercion to adopt this particular religion till section 3 the ordinance is fine there is no problem in the ordinance in the up anti conversion ordinance but and also the state of up is fiercely defending the ordinance stating that in this same judgment stanislaus versus state of madhya pradesh it was clearly held that right to convert anyone is not a fundamental right and the state is doing nothing but a uh, mere regularization of this uh, interfaith marriage just to avoid confusion and discrimination and also the uh, illegal conversion of the ground of marriage again the thing is we already have a law okay we already have a, if the state of up would have brought a simple uh, anti conversion bill as a preventive measures it would have been fine there would have been no issues why because if someone is uh, converting another person by emotional i would say let's uh, take the example of obtaining of a consent emotionally or by blackmailing the other person and marry to that person and converts into the other person the person still has the liberty to file an fir why and um, you are uh, and uh, and uh, under which section the girl has the right to file an fir why because the state because if the consent is obtained illegally and the marriage takes place now i understand this clearly the consent is taken illegally the marriage takes place under the special marriage act and the person gets converted but later on the person uh, when the uh, the fear or the coercion has done uh, as uh, gone away the person can file a police complaint stating that because because her consent was obtained by fraud or by <laughs> force the marriage shall not be recognized the court shall not recognize the marriage and if the marriage is not recognized and the consummation of marriage takes place it is nothing but rape so see the law is there law is strong okay uh, i like uh, alex uh, i'll again explain it to you just wait what does the section 375 says that if there is a sexual intercourse between a man a husband and a wife it is not a rape exception 2 of section 375 but if someone if a person belonging to one religion a marries b of another religion he obtains he uh, you know he is forced to be emotionally or by any other means he has obtained the consent of b to convert into this religion and marry under special marriage act the woman has the liberty to file a complaint that this marriage should not be recognized why because it is violating the condition mentioned in section 2 and section 4 of special marriage act so the court will ultimately will not recognize the marriage and the girl has the right to file a case of rape simple so that is where i am saying that the up ordinance bill it is unconstitutional otherwise the constitutionality of anti conversion laws is there 
and they are anti conversion laws are legal are constitutional but the up ordinance uh, the up ordinance is illegal and i'm sure and i hope that the up ordinance does not stand the that uh, does not stand the test of reasonableness in the court and should be declared unconstitutional why because it is clubbing two issues interfaith marriages and and uh, illegal conversion why because for interfaith marriages we already have a valid and a well established law now the second point what is the controversy part section 4 it says that the how the controversy is arrived even if you even today if the section 4 and section 12 are removed from up ordinance bill even if it is keeping marriage as a part if uh, the state of up just remove section 4 and section 12 from their ordinance then the bill is okay now why why because uh, why up till now it is controversial because of these two section now let's analyze section 4 section 4 says that if a and b are getting married to each other and both of them are uh, you know both of them are what uh, uh, both of them are belong to different religion so if uh, something illegal has taken place then the woman or the man uh, can file a complaint against each other right why because bigamy is a gender rape is not gender neutral but bigamy is a gender neutral crime please read section 494 and 495 again of ipc and uh, i have taught uh, this uh, all these sections in detail in the month of june when i was teaching ipc now section 4 the controversy is that two person has got married now if they are if it is an interfaith marriages there are high chances close to 90% of the time that their parents will not approve their relation okay their parents or their relatives or their siblings will be angry with that kind of relation so section 4 allows the siblings also the parents also to file a complaint against that couple and that is where the problem starts why because suppose the woman okay like suppose there is a hindu woman or a muslim woman who is going to marry a man who belongs to another uh, religion she is she has happily given her consent there are two like uh, there are two like two advocates the husband is hindu wife is muslim or vice versa both of them are well educated both of them love each other both of them are advocate they want to get married. now the parents are not approving now the father of uh, the uh, father of the husband and the mother of the uh, wife both are furious now section 4 is allowing that uh, both of them who has got nothing to do with this union of a husband and a wife can go and file a complaint against them that is where the biggest controversy arises okay although the wife or the husband might not have any problem with the relation but it is allowing the relatives also with the pretext that that uh, the uh, party to the marriage might be under influence or force so that's why it is allowed it is nothing it is just read the last line that is where it allows first mischief misinterpretation and misuse of the bill on the part of public executive and legislature all these three people can crossly misuse this particular provision and that is why you can see that in last since the time this ordinance has brought close to there have been close to 200 people in the state of up which is again illegal up till now i am again saying interfaith marriages interfaith marriages are not illegal interfaith marriages are legal and law governing interfaith marriages are there special marriage act and at the same time i am still stressing to the fact that anti conversion laws are legal why anti conversion laws are more of preventive in nature and but up ordinance bill is not constitutional why it is uh, unnecessarily unnecessarily unreasonably arbitrarily has mixed interfaith marriages given the name uh, to the love jihad and has clubbed Uh, has clubbed the anti conversion laws also uh, for uh, for in order to propagate their political ideology okay section 12 the biggest controversial 
it says that the burden of the proof lies on the person not the person who has converted but the person who has converted who has caused the conversion and he has to prove that he is not uh, he is not guilty and he has not converted the another person he has not converted the another person by the way of coercion or by the way of force again it is highly illegal apart from section 113 apart from like uh, section 113b of indian penal code uh, which talks about the death caused by dowry death which talks about basically the dowry death because it has got another really uh, it has got uh, very specific reasons for that where the onus of proving where the presumption shifts uh, to the process uh, shifts on the accused but here it is unnecessarily done why because if even if even if the person who is converted on his own choice to another religion the burden of proof does not lie on that person but on the other person who has caused the conversion and it will again it will create nothing but misuse of law and obviously uh, you know misuse of law and that's why i said that uh, these two particular sections are arbitrary in nature unreasonableness and uh, they are highly uh, unreasonable and uh, they are unjust and obviously i don't think because of the section 4 and section 12 up anti conversion ordinance shall not uh, uh, shall not stand in the court of law and uh, again as said uh, as it was held in uh, menka gandhi versus union of india uh, 19 menka gandhi uh, 1978 supreme court clearly said that the state can make any law but that due process he has written the uh, word is also that that due process model of criminal law is highly violated because of section so now i hope it is very much clear i have given a very balanced and a holistic view that what is conversion what is article 25 what is the freedom of right what is what are the laws which deals with interfaith marriage what are the laws which deals with anti conversion how anti conversion laws are constitutional why because it is preventive in nature but at the same point of time uh, mixing interfaith marriage with anti conversion law that is where all the problems arise now please go to the next page as well and shafiq jahan uh, the hadiya case i have discussed with you uh, this nidia uh, this uh, madhya pradesh dharma swatantrata apiya adhiniyam ordinance means, means uh, ordinance and the orissa freedom of religion at 1967 it clearly says that uh, you know uh, that uh, and the conversion laws are basically they are recognized and that is where the spanish judgment was given 1978 that to by supreme court not by the madhya pradesh high court okay please go to the last page now next page here now what are my recommendations first of all that's what i has been saying from the start that anti conversion laws should be more of a preventive nature and not of punitive nature why because if we read uh, the punitive part the punishment part in up ordinance uh, the punishment are uh, up to 5 years also and when it deals with the scst people uh, the punishment goes up to 7 years also so that is and the fine how much will be the fine it is again not defined so that is something that uh, it's created a lot of controversy but otherwise anti conversion i am again defending anti conversion laws not the up ordinance why because interfaith marriage should be kept aside of anti conversion how uh, illegal conversions are taking place i have given you a lot of examples for it but that is different from uh, uh, that is different from interfaith marriages and that is why i strongly feel that anti conversion laws even if uh, the state is drafting anti conversion law should be more of preventive in nature rather than punitive being punitive okay and second thing anti conversion laws related to marriage is not required as the condition of special marriage act fulfills all the criteria okay like uh, they have to the, the couple should not be into a prohibited relationship they should not, they should be able to give the valid consent if they don't give the valid consent there is no marriage the marriage is null and void and the couple should not have a living spouse okay only then 
they are allowed to allowed under special marriage act and also uh, before uh, marry uh, before marrying under uh, under uh, such special marriage act they have to give a notice period of 30 days only then they can marry so i strongly feel that the anti conversion law related to marriage to the best of my knowledge and ability it's not at all required in india last but not the least uh, again it's my personal observation that the state and society please i'll read it out what i have written the state and society should focus on social level and need to think that why the organizations who are propagating illegal conversions gets the opportunity why they get the opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, go for illegal conversion why because they capitalize they capitalize on the vulnerabilities of those people who are getting converted for example isn't this fault of uh, the people of upper caste that they, they have regularly been like i am a brahmin i i keep questioning the people also that uh, is it this our fault that uh, we have discriminated backward community so much that it got it gave the opportunities to the other religious organization to ask them to get converted and that to illegally that to uh, you know obtaining their consent by by giving them money or by giving them uh, any other uh, incentives but not uh, through their actual teaching of their uh, religions isn't this our fault so that is where and why because who are the most of the people who are getting converted most of them are tribals and the backward communities they are the biggest target why because it is our fault that we have left this people at a vulnerable stage and when the person is vulnerable vulnerable liberty and rights crime i am a criminal lawyer and that's why i can say, say all these things with more, in a more precise manner when there is vulnerability it invites crime automatically and because of the vulnerability and because of the constant discrimination which they have faced it has given the opportunities to this organization to cash upon it and to uh, spread their illegal uh, their uh, the illegal propagation of their religion and the mass conversion thank you so much so now i am open to your questions okay i just hope that i have given a very very balanced view it is very important i have presented 25 research paper i have got seven publications also and that is where i keep stressing uh, the fact that please for god's sake now you can stop the screen sharing joel that please research a lot please read a lot yes. that please read a lot do a lot of research work why because when you do a lot of research work it's for this webinar trust me i i had a webinar in the morning for 3 hours then i had a client meeting with my colleagues and then i uh, i came back home by 5:30 i took a rest and i said that joel i just you know before this webinar guys i was share, i was talking with joel that i uh, joel i think i have chosen a wrong topic that it might become controversial but he was like sir please if, you, if it is possible that you know can you prepare a webinar which is more balanced so i was like fine so because of the research work which i have done for years for like 4 5 years you know i have failed in uh, my law school also and that's where i have, which is taught me one of my biggest lessons and all the research work all the analytical skills which i have been practicing from last 4 years not 4 years i would say like 4 a year from 2017 onwards okay that is actually helped me that within 30 to 35 minutes i prepared all the contents for your webinar because i knew that how i have to balance it how i have to explain you uh, the uh, minaj i will explain the answer that how i have to explain you the concept and i have to explain you the controversy and i can ask you to think over it okay so my humble request read a lot start reading the direct first research a lot and please uh, that's where uh, you'll end up being a good lawyer okay so yeah the first question is sir so do you think that india can devise a uniform marriage law if yes what are the challenges legislature will face customary law because in especially among the hindus the customary laws are different from each other in south india 
because if you read the, the Hindu marriage act it has a proviso clause it has the proviso clause that uh, you know uh, it has got the proviso clause that the custom allows the marriage amongst third cousins in Hindus especially in, in the southern part of India and again there are a lot of customary practice in North India which are way more different from the customary marriage which are there in the east uh, which are practiced in the eastern eastern part of India so the biggest challenge will be the uh, customary marriage the custom but I strongly feel that even if we bring the customary practice as an exception I would strongly feel that yes uniform especially regarding the uniform marriage laws is, is the need of the earth it was said uh, in the, it was held in the by the Supreme Court in lots of judgments especially the famous judgment of Sarla Mudgal versus Union of India where the husband of Sarla Mudgal changed his religion just to in our uh, uh, he, he wanted that and he, he didn't want to divorce his wife me or he was not able to obtain divorce uh, from his wife and he converted to another religion and he married to his uh, the, uh, to the other person so the Supreme Court said that such conversion means such marriages, the second marriages are illegal and the person shall be prosecuted for bigamy. So I strongly feel and same thing was held in Shahbano judgment, same thing was held in uh, uh, Lily Thomas judgment and I strongly feel that uh, even if the uniformity of marriage laws are not brought, at least registration of all the marriages like uh, in, in uh, Islamic marriage we have the concept of Nikah Nama right so I strongly feel that the registration of the marriage should be made mandatory means all the marriages should be registered so that the state uh, or, or, or the judiciary should have the knowledge that to, to a person who's marrying him. okay so I strongly feel that the uh, registration of the marriage should be made compulsory okay uh, Any you. other questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I don't know. We are commenting the question, question answer session. So, if any of the participants would like to address uh, their queries with regard to the title, can kindly put forward in the chat box or may unmute themselves and uh, accordingly address the gathering. Yes, we have a question from Tinashri. Sir, is the UP ordinance against any personal laws related to marriage in India? No, no, no. UP ordinance is not going against the personal law of any uh, of India. It is simply going against the constitutional law of India. Okay. I just hope now it is clear. Yeah. I've explained. See, anti-conversion law, if it, if it is drafted as a preventive law, it is fine. But the problem in the UP conversion law is that it has clubbed interfaith marriages for which we already have a law in India and section 4 means any person can complain means who has like suppose i'm marrying to a woman she may be of any other religion she may be a christian she may be a muslim she may be a Sikh, okay or she may be a parsi what purpose the other person has in my marriage nothing unless and until my wife okay is complaining to the police regarding any offense that is a different matter or my wife ask her brother or her parents to complain about me that is a different thing but just because i am marrying a woman that does not mean that my parents my sibling or the sibling of my wife or my uh, you know sibling or, uh, or parents of my wife gets the right to go and complain about me and if suppose i am marrying a, uh, a woman and she came to my house uh, we have started living together and she has adopted Hinduism, section 12. Then it should have been, the onus should have been on this uh, woman that uh, she should be able to prove or suppose if I'm marrying a Christian woman or a Muslim woman and I have converted into Islam or uh, I have adopted uh, or I have converted into Christianity, if the onus should have remained on me that I should be able to go to the court and tell that my conversion was willful, I have converted to this religion willfully and nobody has forced me. Now the burden of the proof has been uh, uh, thrown to the wife or to the partner to whom the conversion was done, for whom the conversion was done and that is where the illegality has started. Okay. So I just hope I have very carefully 
without any make without making any controversial statement i have you know uh, i have separated both the issues and i have explained the constitutionality okay at least i will humbly request please connect on linkedin please go through my course and the syllabus it's a wonderful uh, uh, course which i have designed myself or uh, and the classes will be of close to 4 hours the recordings will also be given please i will humbly request please uh, enroll in my class okay so uh, next if there are any more questions kindly uh, put forward this is the link what sir has uh, with regard to the, the, the classes by yes. sir uh, with regard to the webinar sir we have received uh, some other questions as well uh, yeah, yeah sure sure Please. how how successful is the anti conversion law in india to prevent activists like love jihad because there is also an aspect of uh, uh, no, there is nothing called love jihad right. i strongly feel that all right See, so I think because the yeah, uh, because the the participant had noted that there have been several instances of uh, like the anti ATS finding out uh, group. I know, group I know, I know. There have been cases okay. that a person who belongs to uh, Muslim community changed his name, influenced a girl, and got married. and after the marriage it was found that uh, he was the person was not hindu or you know and uh, the person was muslim then what will happen is it simple the we have a laws for it that's what i said that it is the marriage the court will not recognize the marriage mm -hmm. okay the court will not recognize the marriage why because the consent of the woman was obtained by fraud it is not a marriage it is a rape case provided provided if the consummation of marriage is done if the marriage is not consummated okay still it is kidnapping uh -huh. sorry abduction abduction yeah. simple so ipc is there uh -huh. we have laws for it all right got it yes sure. yeah simple anyone else would like to put forward the queries or we could uh, move to the, fi the, the 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 final end of of the session uh, but at the again at the same point of time we have to accept the that thing also that illegal conversion are being done by max most of the religious organization just as we see all those youtube uh, all those videos in the facebook where the some of the missionaries are trying to convince people that you know uh, you are the, uh, the viral video yes. and, the uh, viral you know, video which came about uh, basically the issue has uh, given me the power i'll take back your disease and all this mm. drama or the kharbapsi uh, issues which has now originated very recently these things just to stop these things anti conversion laws are being made so here anti conversion laws are not punitive in nature they are preventive in nature they here the law the purpose of anti conversion law is to prevent illegal conversion okay. otherwise if you want to follow any religion article 25 is there for you Okay. So, there's one more question: Is there a punitive action against those who want to reconvert to their original faith, or like what? No, what are the term no, original no faith can be? Or what can be the term original faith or original religion can be if you want to reconvert to the same faith? Previous faith, simple. Like suppose there is a Muslim who converted into Christianity. He wants to again adopt Islam. He is going back to his uh, parents' faith. Why? Because his parents were Muslim. Like suppose if I'm a Hindu. i got converted into christianity or islam or sikhism okay or parts uh, not parsi because they we don't have a concept of uh, adopting uh, converting into parsi religion but like only christianity and take example of christianity and uh, islam but now i i feel that no i should go back to my original religion then the term will be nothing my parents religion my parents are hindu right yeah. and uh, okay joel give me an example of uh, this kind of uh, reconversion very famous example guys please participate so uh, there uh, he was a hindu he got converted into islam and later on he again became hindu not sure the eldest son of mahatma gandhi uh -huh. read about it yeah simple so religion is nothing but a very private affair and religion means how a person wants to connect his soul to almighty if the person feels he wants to he, he is able to connect to almighty with the with the way of islamic teaching he can adopt islam if he feels he, he can connect to the god by the way of uh, the teaching of the jesus he can convert into christianity if he feels by he should he is able to connect with the god by the teaching of guru nanak dev or, or all the 10 gurus then he can 
lot of asceticism if he feels that no he is able to connect himself to the uh, god by the way of hinduism by the way of sanatan dharma he can uh, follow the sanatan dharma and in the sanatan dharma it's not that he has to follow a particular sect of sanatan dharma sanatan dharma is very wide he can follow any when see sanatan dharma means religion dharma means religion and the sub part of the religion is the sect s e c t okay panth parasti panth in hindi it's called panth he can follow any panth iskon vaishnavism is a vaishnavism brahmo samaj or is some other a lot of other ways it's up to them they can follow any path it's is and that's why i said that that's why i follow the principle of jawaharlal nehru that religion means it's a very private affair it's a very private affair of a person and his god okay any other question if you have any other questions you may put put forward or you could over to a close uh, i think with that being said uh, yeah so can the phenomenon hindutva be called a sect uh, uh, if you could just be a little more clear i have to disagree it's i have to disagree hindutva is something when we read the history hindutva is something which uh, has a history of 9 decades i guess it was coined around 1920s by the person uh, who was that person though no, yeah the Samantha. comments yes yeah, so i i i i personally disagree with the, see there are a lot of followers of vinayak damodar savarkar but i personally disagree with this with the opinion of bd savarkar okay for me my definition of my sanatan dharm is uh, way much different my way, my definition of sanatan dharm is a lot holistic and i disagree with the religious with the views of vd uh, savarkar i will not comment that whether that is right or wrong but i disagree oh, sure. okay i think with that being said uh, if there are any further questions you can put it forward or you can also contact sir uh, by linkedin as sir has put yeah, forward I'll, say, I'll again the message my just wait i'll again share my uh, linkedin id with you and now because in next 3 uh, days i have got four four webinars lined up and this by being my which uh, 47th webinar so yeah i'll touch uh, i'll touch 50 the uh, i'll cross the mark of 50 within this week of uh, conducting 50 webinars and and it took me one year i start i gave my first webinar on 12th july 20 i gave my first webinar uh, on 20th or 12th july 2020 Thank you, sir. Uh, so I think uh, with that being said, uh, we I would request if Minaj is on the call to to kindly give the uh, de- deliver the word of thanks and also thanks sir, for being, for joining us in the session. On that note, sir, we we would like to thank you for participating in this webinar hosted by Argumenter Podcast and specifically giving us. your inputs and your insights on secularism in india and also uh, how certain anti conversion laws are actually do actually have a good intent through the legislature but actually interfere on in the personal affairs of the people by also including interfaith marriages and i think it was beautifully explained by you as to how we already have the special marriage act for interfaith marriages and how the anti conversion laws which interfere in interfaith marriage also are anti constitutional and go against the uh, the constitutional principles mentioned under article 25 so that we thank you for your participation and we thank you for your knowledge that you've imparted on all of us and uh, for all the participants we request you to check out sir's courses to connect with sir on on linkedin and also check out argumento podcast on linkedin instagram youtube spotify and other platforms I think on that note we can end this webinar so we thank you. Uh, thank you so much once again uh, everyone for joining in. Uh, do fill up the uh, feedback form before you leave uh, because this is essential regarding the certification and also with regard to connecting with sir in the future as well. And uh, do do kindly do so and thank you all for joining us once again and uh, hope you all do well and also, also do do check out sir's uh, the course what he uh, mentioned as well. and uh, thank you for joining us once again thank you thank you sir.